Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Cut in Line. I was at Costco the other day. I had just finished punching my food order in at the kiosk and was on my way to the order pickup line when a large, angry old man wearing a US veteran baseball cap blocked me with his shopping cart so he could cut the line. I looked him up and down to see what I was dealing with and he glared right back as if to say, try me boy. Now I'm not one to get in a fight over a spot in line and I could tell that telling him off was not going to go anywhere good. So I let him be, but I did notice something during my assessment. He did not have an order slip from the kiosk, at least not that I could see. So I waited. Imagine the grin on my face when he finally got to the window to find out that he had been in the wrong line the whole time. Carrying my order back to the car, I wore that grin as I passed that dude who was now at the very back of an even longer line than the one he had just left empty handed. I could have told him he was in the wrong one, maybe saved him some anguish, but that is not a courtesy I believe he deserved. The next story is called Changing Fields. Several years ago, I coached a kids soccer team. It was a community recreation league with volunteer coaches with a focus on fun and equal playing time. There were two fields next to a school. The third field is a two minute walk away and hidden behind a thick stand of trees, invisible from the two fields. One would never know it was there, but did have a small parking lot next to it, accessible only by a rarely used, poorly maintained back lane. Most people would park in the school lot and walk the two minutes along the path through the trees. The two fields next to the school were typical school fields not particularly well maintained, uneven and definitely not regulation sized. Typical school fields. The third field was regulation sized, perfectly maintained, had new bleachers and was maintained like a professional field with regular waterings, cutting and seeding. It was the groundskeeper's pride and joy. It was the first day of a new season and my team showed up for our first practice. Except there was another team on our assigned field. A team of talented players with matching socks and shorts. In their late teens, I approached the coach and explained that he was on our field and that his field was a two minute walk away down the path. He politely told me to take a hike. He was there first and that was that. So not looking for a confrontation, I took my team to the really nice field. The parents had bleachers to sit in and we had a great time on the big boy field. After the practice, the groundskeeper asked me why we were practicing on this field. I told her what happened with the other coach. She told me she asked the other coach to switch the field, but he told her to get stuffed and that was his field. Two days later, at our second practice, his team was on our field again. The governor called me over to talk to her and the other coach. She stated, just to confirm, for the rest of the season, you are switching fields with this team on the far field and your team on this field here? Yeah, this is our field and the little kids will be on the far field. He looked at us arrogantly. Fine by me, I stated, grabbed my big net of balls and trudged over to the professional field. Two glorious weeks passed, when during practice, the other coach came over with his team and saw our field. He approached me and told me that we needed to switch fields. I laughed in his face. Go get the convener over so we can discuss. His team started trying to use our field. One of my team was scared of the bigger kids and started crying. A couple of parents stepped in and started shooing them away before one of my team got hurt. He returned with his entire team and the convener. She was beaming. She asked him if he remembered our conversation two weeks ago. He started to argue. She told him that we were keeping with the terms of that agreement and to go back to his own field. They eventually changed their game dates and times so they could use the big field but had to practice on the old field. 
My team never had to set foot on the older field all season. The third story is called By the Book. I work for my country's customs administration. We basically do what you would expect. Anything that comes into my country is subject to duties, levies and taxes. And the goods can be inspected to ensure all the paperwork filed actually conforms with reality. Certain differences exist between private and commercial goods. Most private goods are not subject to customs duties. But other than that, customs law applies in every aspect to both commercial and private entities crossing the border. Meaning that many regulations, usually reserved for truck drivers and professionals, can easily be applied when it comes to private individuals. This was something a particularly nasty traveler had to realize when he bumped heads with my superior. I was working a night shift at a rather small border station in the north of my country, where me, a colleague and my superior had activated an irregularly manned border station. It was 3.40 in the morning and we didn't see too many cars. The ones that crossed over were foreigners, who drove into our country for work. Many of them lived in the border region, knew the procedures and played ball. Some were friendly, some a bit grumpy, unsurprisingly if you have to get up that early. But all of them did as we ask, show some identification, answer our questions about what is in your vehicle and maybe endure us taking a look inside. And then it arrived. A black Porsche Cayenne. In the Porsche was Mark. The suit, the haircut, his briefcase. Everything indicated that he had money and wanted people to know about it. Which is fine. People should enjoy having nice things. And signaling is a part of social interaction. We treat everyone the same. And we expected this encounter to go as uneventfully as the previous ones. Boy were we wrong. We nicely asked him for his ID card or passport, which he handed over. We then asked Mark what he was transporting in the car. When he stopped, we saw that there were several cardboard boxes in the trunk and on the back seat. He answered with, I don't see how that is any of your business. Bad mistake. It was, in fact, not only our business, but the very nature of our job. And since Mark had not only failed to answer, but had also failed the attitude test, we ordered him to open the trunk. He got out of the car and opened his mouth again. I will open the trunk. But just so you know, I want this done by the book. You touching my stuff is unacceptable to begin with. So if you damage anything or I find as much as a smudge, I will put you in a world of hurt. I'll confirm that you understood me. Now, at this point, my superior stepped forward. We have understood you quite well. Now, I just need to know whether you were serious when you said that you want this to be done by the book. Can you confirm that you want this done by the book? Mark then sealed his fate by answering in the affirmative, upon which my superior updated him on the situation. Splendid. According to customs law, the person crossing the border is responsible for opening and unloading the vehicle he or she drives must unpack all the containers, present the goods for inspection, repackage them and reload the vehicle. When it comes to non-commercial crossings, we usually do all that, as not to inconvenience private travelers. But since you want this done by the book, you will have to do it. Failure to comply allows me to keep you and your vehicle at this border station for as long as I want. Any kind of resistance allows me to restrain you. And now, get to work. And make sure you don't accidentally damage your own car or its contents. Mark then had to lift several cardboard boxes filled with all kinds of personal items. It appears he was moving apartments into the border station. Had to unpack all of them, lay out the contents piece by piece for inspection, repackage everything and reload his car. Had he simply answered that the boxes contained nothing significant, we would have taken a quick glance into the trunk and he would have been on his way after 3 minutes. This way the whole procedure took 35 minutes and left some nice sweat stains on Mark's shirt. He filed a complaint. The complaint was dismissed. 
since everything was done by the book. The last story is called Documentation. I used to work for a small company that was acquired by a group of investors who did not do a good job of hiding that they were planning to replace everyone with low-skill contractors and sell the company. For all of 2023, they've been pushing us non-stop to update our procedure documentation. Our senior senior manager announced that there will be a monthly quota for procedure documentation. When there was pushback, his response was that it doesn't always have to be complicated procedures or perfect procedure, etc. I was already thinking about leaving to finish my degree, so I immediately began the application process. But in the meantime, for most of 2023, I met my quota by documenting the most unnecessary procedures. But I gave them corporate descriptions, so it's not immediately obvious how to turn on my computer, accessing information technology resources, how to log on to my computer, utilizing security practices for information and technology resources, how I delete and move files out of Google Drive, allocating digital assets for collaborative processes, how to block your Outlook calendar, automating availability information across Teams, how to request new office supplies from Staples, physical asset procurement. Since our team will be let go early in any acquisition, most of the lower level managers left or were checked out as they job searched. My manager had been so distracted that they never reviewed any of my procedures. I asked for feedback on a few real procedures to make it seem like I was doing what they asked. And basically, they simply checked off that I've been meeting my quota. I left the job in December. I just heard from an ex-colleague who is still with the company that they just discovered my procedures. He texted me and said the senior senior manager is furious because other people were basically doing the same thing. And now most of our team has left and they barely have anything documented. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.